What's going on, fam? We Kevin and Jesse here with you with the Elite State of Mind podcast. Jesse, how you doing today, man? Uh, I'm good, man. How you? Man, I'm doing well. I'm doing well, family. Right, make sure right. you like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram page. And on YouTube, make sure you hit that little bell so you get reminded when we drop a new episode. Lots of good things coming for you guys. Share us. So, family, what Jesse and I are going to talk about today, uh, something's been trending a little bit, red flags and safe spaces. Mm-hmm. Now, Jesse, when we talk about red flags, what does that what does that bring to mind for you? Man, we're talking about aha uh-huh and oh no, ooh, yeah, types of moments, man. Yeah, I think for me, red flags are you know things that you may have set within yourself that are just like, man, I'm not putting up with this. I or maybe somebody did it to you before, and you were like, yeah, I didn't like the way that went. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now. The question is, why do we ignore these red flags? We typically ignore the red flags because part of our human nature is to want what we want. Mm, Regardless of the consequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter what the consequence may be, we might, you know, hit the override button and go ahead and get it. Most other animals in nature, they go ahead, you know, when something is afoot. They yeah, get out of they there. They get out of there, right? That's that's true. Do you think yeah. it is because we are, you know, what most what most of us believe to be the, the apex of creation, the, the top of the food chain, that we always have that conqueror's mentality? I mean, that could be part of it, and also just us being comfortable, mm. right? Feeling like we don't have to stay in tune with, uh, you know, our natural self, you know, okay. the things that you know keep us safe uh, because of everything that we have that makes us comfortable you know, those natural instincts kind of go to the wayside. Right. Now, when you say natural self, expound on that for a moment. Just, uh, you know, your natural, your original self is, you're going to be aware of your surroundings, right? You're going to be the element when you know you're not safe and you can feel it. Mm -hmm. When you're in tune with you, you just feel it. Like, oh, man, I don't know about this. I'm probably going to listen to myself and go the the other direction. Sometimes you couldn't see it through, my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus just going ahead and being like, oh, yeah, nothing's wrong. I'm safe. That is, that is very true. You need to, are you, though? You need to listen to that little voice on your shoulder that says, hey, man, don't go over there tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not going to turn out well for you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yep. we go. Yep. 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 And the next I'm thing good. we know, uh, it's not, not going good. You're playing that usher, aren't you? Oh, no. Oh, anywho, anywho, anywho stay, yeah, step on toes. Step <laughs> on toes. some confessions. Step on toes. What are some red flags that you have? have seen or that or just some things that may be red flags for you personally or in business or in relationships you're just like no i can't go down that road okay in business we're talking about the year when it gets down to the the nitty and the gritty Mm -hmm. it's time to you know we're talking brass tacks time to come off the cash flow the dollars in the cents and it's listen uh ah i only got part of it right now and uh I'm gonna hit you next week, and I'm gonna hit you. You know, we kept that. Really, we don't tell Sprint that. You know, it's time no, to know, you ain't telling OG and E because they don't care. They're, They're cutting cut you off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Social red flag. You know, you can't. You get if if it's for them, it's for them. Right. right? That's true. So they come prepared. You come prepared. Just leave on your, and with, dealing with yourself. Right. When something's for you, you ready? You ready to purchase? You go make that thing happen. You make it happen, right? right. You figure it out. Um, I, I think a lot of times also our, our red flags are, are learned. I just, I just want to throw that in. Oh, yeah. They're learned. No, they, they are definitely from, you know, experiences. And, you know, something you said a few times on, you know, other episodes with the podcast being, you know, are we keeping our word to ourselves? Yeah. And for me, yeah. that's definitely something that I've had to become cognizant of, mm. you know, over these last few years. Am I keeping my word to myself? I told myself yeah. I was going to go be a realtor, yeah. but then I procrastinated for a couple of years. Yeah. I didn't keep my word to myself. Mm. You know, told myself I had some fitness goals. Yeah. Didn't keep my word to myself. Told yeah. myself I was going to you know, do, go and do and accomplish some things, mm-hmm. and I didn't keep my word to myself. And yeah. then when I allowed myself to not you know, check my own red flags, mm-hmm. I would let other people cross some lines and boundaries that I had set. Right. Right. That they should not have as well. Yeah. Has that ever been something that you've seen that because you didn't, you know, you weren't protective of yourself, then you were allowing others to not 
be in the in the same space as well. For sure. Like you said, I think, you know, you have to the nail on the head. If I let myself off the hook, right? It's not, it's something that, you know, E. T. talks about all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, you expect more out of other people and from other people than you do from yourself. How does that work exactly? Right. How is that working out for you? So, like you said, if I understand what my red flags are, if I can, I can notice what they are, <clears throat> and then I can see that, hey, I'm not paying attention to my own red flags. Mm-hmm. So how can I enforce that with somebody else? Right. right. So the only way you really can is to, you know, you first enforce it on yourself. And then, hey, it makes it real simple. It makes it easy. Like, <laughs> What did we say the other day? That whole, that Bugs Bunny line, I dare you to cross this one. Hey, then you keep erasing it. <laughs> now cross over this one. Yeah. I, I feel you. So in, in dealing with red flags, like you said, we learn, you know, some of these things, whether, you know, your red flag is, I got to make sure I'm healthy, or I got to make sure who I'm with is healthy, or yeah. I have to make yeah. sure that I'm financially stable, or yeah. who I'm with is financially stable, whether it's a relationship or in business. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes we all have, you know, trauma from our past, things that we've experienced. And we need people to be a safe space. Mm -hmm. What does a safe space look like for you? I think, man, a safe space is just a place that you know where, you know, regardless of what I'm going to say, right? Mm -hmm. We can can be, we can be fully, fully human. Mm -hmm. And regardless, here's another thing also, regardless of what you know uh, of my uh, declaration of faith, I can still be transparent and open and honest and say, hey, listen, this person that pushed the button over here, I was like five milliseconds away from choking them. And you know, you're not gonna be like, well, you know, that's not what the Lord would do. You you know, you know what I'm saying? Right, you know, and I and you know, I think one of the craziest things is like you, you know, to, to go on what you were talking about, how people always want to that's that's our first statement as people of faith we always want to tell folks what the lord would do <laughs> and i'm not saying that's wrong but what i'm saying like i had an experience you know you know about this lost a baby mm-hmm. so going through that the first thing you don't want to hear is someone say well the lord knew best no right now my life sucks right right now right. my feelings are hurt right i don't really i don't know where to go, what to do, how to navigate my emotions. Mm-hmm. Cause I've never felt this before. Mm-hmm. I was, I got over being scared. Right. I got over being anxious. Right. And now I'm to the point where I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be fun. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm gonna, I get, to, I get to teach some things. I get to find out what I'm gonna have. And the mm-hmm. next thing you know, yeah, this is ripped from you. Yeah. And it's always like you said, well, the Lord, all in due time. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, some, some, some. <laughs> Days, weeks, months after, mm. we can have that conversation. Right. But right. why don't people ever just, man, that sucks, big dog. I, I hate to hear that for you. Man, you know, maybe we can go get something to eat, man, and hopefully. Right. You know, there's probably not a whole lot I can say right now. Like that, that's it. Like, that's what I was thinking, man. Like, it goes back to our friendship, you know, mm. episode, right? We, we take the great example of sometimes, man, one of the best things you can do is just be there like your friends just need you like needs your presence sure right and you ain't got to say nothing you ain't always got to have the answer just be there like let them talk let let them express their experience at that moment during that time on you and you just shut the hell up that's that's those are facts like you said it's always somebody i got a word for i don't need a word i don't need a word i need a place where if i gotta cry i can cry if mm. I need to cuss, I can cuss. Yep. If I need to kick something, you can, you know, all right, be careful, big dog. Just don't break your foot. Right. You know what I mean? I feel you. It's, it, like you said, it's, it's always that, that, you know, I'm bad about this as well. Always sometimes we have a need to fix something, you know, before fully, ex- you know, ass- assessing the situation. Yeah. You know, because I might think that I'm being a safe space because if somebody's not talking, my – my answer to get them to express themselves is to apply pressure. Yeah. Pressure makes diamonds, it busts yeah. pipes. Right? But yeah, I've had to sure. learn sure. as I get older, not everybody is going to respond That's right. to that pressure. That's right. It might make some people draw back, it might make them shut down, it mm-hmm. might make them you know, go back into their corner. Yeah. And now not only have I not been able to you know, be a safe space for them, be there to help them, but I've also added to the trauma you know, on top of what they were experiencing. What are, what are some things that we can do to have the self-awareness of how to be a safe space for somebody? 
I mean, one of the main things I was, you know, that really just came to me was, you know, the Apostle Paul says that I become all things to, to all people so that mm -hmm. I might win some. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think that's overlooked mm -hmm. a lot of times. It is, if, if, I, if I need to thug out with you for a minute, I need to do that. Right. Um, if I need to have a drink for you, with you, I need to do that. Um, you know, whatever it is you need to do, we need to go work out. Let's go do that. Right. What, whatever you need for that moment to make sure that you are okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've, I've created, I think the beauty of it is in doing that is you create not just a physical safe space, but a, a mental one and a, an emotional one. Right. Um, where, you know, the individual is, is saying, hey, I'm going to let this guard down and I'm going to let all this out because right. if not, it builds up over time and it shows itself in a multitude of different areas, different ways. Very, very, very true. And like you said, I think the, the biggest thing is that, that, emotional, that emotional availability and sometimes in our silence, just allowing someone to pour out everything as you said before that's happening in their human experience yeah. and and get that thing out there because you know when you're dealing with you know the depressions and the anxieties and and you know all of these all of these things some of these other mental health issues you know if you can't get those emotions out if right. you yourself can't you know if you're not in a space you know whether it's you know if you need counseling whether if it's you just need a friend mm -hmm. those things build up and then bad things happen right if you don't have a safe space family right. let me let me right. real quick right. say don't let anybody tell you not to go seek counseling not to go seek help right you know and and one thing that's really bad about us in the black community is the first thing if somebody says they have mental health mm -hmm. jesus is your counselor he is right. but he has also given some people the gifts of right. sitting down and listening mm -hmm. don't let people tell you not to go seek some help, whether you want to go seek a Christian counselor or right. just somebody who is trained and professional in this manner mm -hmm. to allow you to talk, please reach out and do that because it is so important and imperative that you have that for yourself, for your family, if you have children, for your mm -hmm. loved ones. Yeah. So therefore, we don't run into, man, did you hear what happened to such and such? Right, right. And I think, I think that's a reason why, you know, for so long, that uh, we continue the generational uh, change, baggage, shortcomings, whatever term you want to use is because, you know, like you said, it's a, you hate to say it in this manner, but it's true. It's used as a crutch, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's a crutch that to say that uh, I'm just going to put it all on God and not on the fact that these thoughts and feelings are mine mm -hmm. and so I have to still regardless of their their negative connotations or, or, or their weightiness I still have to be a good steward of them mm. and I can't allow them just to sit and fester because anything that does that it normally turns rots into after cancer something. some sort of disease follows yes. and then it takes yes. you on to the grave yes Yes. And the next thing you know, it's just not, it's not doing you any good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, to, to, to carry on with that, like you said, with it being a crutch, why is it that we sometimes just will not become a safe space, whether it's for ourselves, mm -hmm. whether it's for someone else? And as, as the young kids said, we just stay toxic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's work. Mm. It's work. It's work to... Again, sit down and take a self-assessment to say I got some red flags that uh, I have not dealt with mm -hmm. and that I need to study myself to know, you know, what I present to other people. Right. You know, and then also what I can't take. That changes, right? You, Everybody has, you know, a history and a past and, you know, those things that you, you've dealt with. Right. You know, the things that you've dealt with. Like, I appreciate my siblings so much because they allowed you know, through a, a couple of different conversations <clears throat> to let me see that, hey, man, like you weren't there to know mm -hmm. exactly what my journey was. Sure. Right? Because sure. we got an age gap. Right, yeah. Right? Just like they don't know what mine. 
you know, so dealing, dealing with two totally different, <laughs> you know, situations and scenarios. Right. right. So we had to come to a great understanding, and I appreciate them so much for you know just bringing that to my attention that you know maybe something that I've said or done could be a trigger for them. Like it's a right. red flag trigger for them. Like oh yeah, I'm not talking to this brother because you know you did the same thing that maybe one of their friends did or maybe one of their teachers True. you know had done and. You know, we got to be aware. That takes work to yes. to say, oh, man, I got to own that. Like, I got to own that, that I missed, um, you know, whatever. Like, for instance, like, I missed the fact that uh, a few years ago, I didn't give you the space to be human. Mm-hmm. I didn't give you the grace that you needed, you know, at that particular time. Sure. So I got to own the fact that, okay, well... I dropped that ball. Mm-hmm. That was me, right? Because me being older, I know better, mm, right? Right. And even if I don't know better, I should I should be working towards being more aware to where you are in life, what's going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? And just just being more aware of the surroundings and what's and what's happening with those that we claim to love. Mm. So that's what really the kicker is. The work is if I actually claim to love you or my siblings or whoever, then I better take into account, you know, exactly like the old people would say, how I'm treating you. I'm trying to treat everybody right. Well, that includes the people that are close to you. Right? We can't overlook just because, (laughs) step on toe moment, just because we're family. Very true. That you got to take all of my crap. And that's... No. And especially, you know, obviously, real quick, we love the boomer generation, but they just really feel like sometimes that because, for whatever reason, they are older than us, they may have, you know, lived during a, a what some may consider a tougher time period, um, and, and sure, there were sure. some things that they had sure. to deal with that we did not, yeah. but like you said, now it's, well, I should be able to treat you any type of way. Mm-hmm. I should be able to do any type of thing to you. Mm-hmm. And purely because I'm your elder, because I'm your mother, father, aunt, uncle, you know, mm-hmm. old lady down the street. Right. right. I can just sit and talk to you however I wish, however I think, <laughs> and you can't do anything about it. But right. then, right. when you tell them, hey, look here, mm-hmm. first of all, I'm grown. Yeah. Secondly, David wrote me in the 27th Division of Psalm and mm-hmm. said, even after my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Mm-hmm. You're to be a good steward over okay. me. Right. You don't own me. Right. Because I don't right. own my children. Right. I'm to be a good steward right. over them yep. and to foster a good relationship. Mm-hmm. But if I am so convoluted to think that they have right. to have me in their life, yeah. I'm probably yeah. not going to have a real good back half with them. Yeah, probably not. When they when they get out and they got their own money and, and mm-hmm. all these you know and all these other things and they don't need I'm not their sole source. Right. So one one thing that I want to talk about you know real quick in the in with the red flags and you and you mentioned the triggers that a lot of times somebody will bring you hey you know when you said X Y Z or when you did X Y Z yeah I took you know I took offense to it and I'm not talking about you know, people getting mad because you weren't all black. That offended me. <laughs> but I'm talking about, you know, some things that you may have said, like you yeah. said, because of past trauma experiences that happened with an individual. Mm-hmm. But now I want to tell you, I want to invalidate your feelings and right. emotions. Right. I want, oh, you know, I didn't mean it like that, so you shouldn't take it like that, and let's just move on. And I try to no. sweep it under the rug. Yeah, no. Why do we do no. that? Um... Again, man, I'm, I'm just the lack of ownership. Because it, if I sweep it under the rug, man, I don't have to own the fact that I I, I, I missed it. Mm. I don't have to own the fact that uh, I'm not acknowledging you as a person, mm. your thoughts, your your heart, your mind, your spirit, uh, all of that. And it's just not right. Like I said, again, like I had you know, good conversations with. My siblings about it, like, because I was bad about it, man. Yeah. Like, and it has to do with, you know, if I'm raised by, you know, an older generation, then, you know, they ain't trying to hear none of that. No, nah, like, you suck it up. They don't, they, yeah, they don't want to hear that. And it has its place. Don't get me wrong. Sure. <clears throat> it has its place because, uh, conversely, 
what we live in right now is super sensitive. Yes. Right? You can't take much of anything. You can't say much of anything. And people falling out on the floor. Oh, my God. I can't believe you said that. I can't right. believe you had an opinion. Right? Right. But at the same time, you know, being able to acknowledge. We're trying to, we're trying to find the middle ground. Mm. Right? Being able to, like you said, to acknowledge and validate you as a person. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to make sure that you're validated in what you think, because what you think matters. True. Make sure you're validated in how you feel, because how you feel matters. Um, to, to validate, you know, the emotional ebb and flow that is your life. Right. So you've been around 30 plus years. There's some things that happen in, in, in early childhood development, in elementary school, middle school, high school. Because I have to take into account in all of these things. Right. And I need to be aware. I don't have to be in depth. Right, because I'm not a counselor, right? I'm not a licensed therapist, therapist for sure. Right, so I need to be aware of some of the things. But but to that notion, I probably should pick up their book, right? Mm. To know, to, just to be familiar with what they deal with, like what triggers somebody, what are some right. of the you know emotional red flags I need to be looking for. Like, oh man, they're really upset. What I just said really hurt them. Like, well, how right. did you know? Oh, man, the eyes kind of sunk in, mm-hmm. kind of got low, kind of ducked the head. Body language changed. There you go, right? But if I just don't give it to him, if I just don't care, mm-hmm. then, no, we're just, just going to move by this. It's not, not that big of a deal. What does that say about me? For sure. And then, one, you are unaware. You are not self-aware. And like you said, you're not checking, you know, the surroundings of, of those around you. That's one thing I definitely had to learn, uh, you know, having a daughter. You know, that a look I could give Mm -hmm. would change, Mm -hmm. you know, like that. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, like you said, again, you're raised by that generation that was born in the 50s and the 60s. And they didn't care how they looked at us. (laughs) You know, (laughs) it was, no, you're going to you're going to get it together real quick. They, you know, some learn to apologize, you know, later on in life for sure um, as they grew. But, you know, for me, it was, oh, like. Come here, baby. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Daddy didn't mean that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't mean yeah. you know to to change the experience you were having mm-hmm. because I looked at you in this way or because you thought you know you were in trouble mm-hmm. and you really weren't. Yeah. So that you know that self awareness has has truly helped me you know in dealing you know with her now mm-hmm. with my son. Even being ten months, I can look at him and you know I'm gonna have to slide him. I'm pretty sure because yeah, sure. I can look at him I'm and sure. he just looks back. <laughs> like what's up? Yeah, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. Now when I push you down, player, yeah. don't, don't, don't get this twisted. Yeah. You know, because he been watching yeah. He-Man, so now he think he got the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay. I'm gonna take a little sword from him. Juiced up, man. You know, so one thing that I think we should all, you know, really do is definitely take a look at what are some red flags, you know, for yourself, and then you can police or be cognizant of mm-hmm. the red flags that you have with others. Yeah. Now, in, in, in dealing with red flags, are red flags always a no-go? Are they always a stop here, don't press forward? Or Not should we be willing to grow with a person, maybe yeah. past some of their immaturities, inexperience, lack mm-hmm. of knowledge? Mm-hmm. For sure. Not always. Um, like you said, you know, dealing with somebody who actually wants to grow, mm. you know, that's aware of their shortcomings and just, and maybe just with that particular thing or mm-hmm. those particular things, they just weren't aware, right? No one had probably brought, brought it to their attention. Sure. And it's one of those things like, oh man, I'm, I'm my bad. I, I didn't know. I didn't know, right? Mm-hmm. You don't know what you don't know. Right. So at the point that you actually address it and then they put forth the effort to educate themselves about what they have done and how they need to grow then it's like, yeah, we're gonna walk this thing out. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna rock with you. Like, it's okay. Um, you know, I think to their credit, to the boomer credit, they're good at that. Yes. Like, they're very good at, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna walk it out. This is what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see it through. Mm-hmm. Versus, you know us. We, uh, yeah, you did that. Well, we'll see you. <laughs> We definitely got to work that. Contract terminated. Right. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I'm back at the yeah. draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we definitely we definitely have to to work to work on that. For yeah. for sure. So Jesse, before we get out of here, what I what I would like for you to do 
is to you know share with the family just you know what are some maybe some red flags that we should all go okay no i'm not doing that i'm not going down that road oh. and then how to be self-aware of your own red flags and safe spaces man i think um you know a red flag that we have to be aware of is just like for instance women for being male so for for my for our female listeners like if if this man will not embrace manhood mm. if he will not embrace it that's a red flag that you have to let go and, and what am i saying when i say that this individual refuses at all costs to maintain consistent employment mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what the field is man it, right. it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter what you're doing um a part of our makeup as men as part of our mental health that keeps us good is to know that we're contributing right to ourselves to the care and concern of ourselves and if we have significant others if we have kids to them as well right right but if this cat no matter what you you having sit down meetings like y'all the godfather and uh, you know <laughs> and, and this dude still won't do nothing right right like you, you you're giving your heart you opening you're sharing your heart mm -hmm. and nothing okay you gotta terminate the yeah, contract we gotta go like we gotta go and so um to that same end to that same token then we have to take a look and see well why would we accept that mm. what is it in us that says that we're not valued enough to allow this individual to do that and to hold an important space in our life. Right. If they want to do that, let them do that. Sure. You know, if that's what they want to do, you do that. But in order to hold this particular place, there's some requirements. There's a standard for that, you know? So hopefully that helps, man. I, I feel you, family. What I want to leave you with is this in, in the dealing with, with red flags, um, I, I remember that in Romans, uh, the Romans writer said, Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. You cannot continually, continually, continually allow somebody to disrespect the you as a person, the trauma that may have been caused to you or to cause new trauma to you and allow that tree not to bear any fruit mm. in your life. Mm. The ax is laid at the root and it says every tree that doesn't bear fruit is hewn down and thrown in the fire. Yeah. Everything is a lesson, it's not a loss. Right. But you've you've got to and even though it's tough, even though it's hard, if if that tree is not gonna bear fruit, if it's only if it's not giving you shade, mm. if it just if it's the branches are falling on your house causing damage. Causing damage, yeah. You need to get that thing out of there. Yes. You need yes. to cut that thing loose. Yes. But I, I do want to encourage you that there are people out there that are willing to listen to you, to talk to mm -hmm. you again. Yeah. I cannot, you know, drive home the point enough to find somebody out there who's going to be Wilford Beyond's container and allow you to, to pour your emotions um, into them yeah. and be that safe space. Uh, so, you know, you guys, you can always reach out to myself or Jesse. Yeah. Um, you know, you can all reach out to somebody, and whether it be in your family, your friend, you know, go seek professional help if you need it. Family, we thank you guys for tuning in with us today. We know today would not have been what it was had you not taken our time to mm -hmm. come sit down and listen with us. Uh, make sure you like, follow, and subscribe to our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram page. Share us. We appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Hello.